In this episode, we're going to look at the lighting and audio setup for an interview. Recently did an interview and some things turned out really well. Other things didn't work so well, so I definitely learned some lessons. Hopefully you can learn from these as well. Let's take a look. For my dissertation, I was able to explore a site in Nevada, out in the middle of nowhere, called Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park. It's both a mining, historical mining camp and a paleontological site of interest because there are so many well-preserved ichthyosaur skeletons. It's kind of a mass mortality site. So I investigated the rocks in which those fossils were found to see if there were any special environmental conditions that may have contributed to those animals' deaths or to their preservation, actually. All right, first let's let run through the lighting and uh, just put together a quick diagram here. It's not perfect. Uh, my diagramming program doesn't have all the elements that I needed, but uh, you'll get the main idea here. First of all, we have our talent uh, seated here facing our key light. This is a softbox. In my case, I'm using an e-photo a uh, five bulb compact fluorescent softbox. We've talked about those in a previous episode, so you can go check that out if you want the details on that. Over here on this side, we've got a another of the same light. It is using uh, also five bulbs, but in this case, I only had one of the five turned on. In the key light, I had three of the five turned on. So um, I have the talent facing the key light, and our main camera was right here. Um, so we're getting the interviewee or the talent at a little bit of an angle as they're facing this key light. And uh, as the interviewer, I, I kind of stood right here at eye level with the camera so that the interviewer would or interviewee would look at me and uh, would get the right angle we were looking for. Now, one of the important things I learned here is that, uh, and I've picked this up kind of from the photography world, when you have someone at an angle like that, it's best if the tip of their nose does not go beyond the edge of their cheek. So you don't want a profile shot. Um, you need their nose to, uh, their cheek on the far side to still be visible. And uh, that's usually a more flattering look for most people. Now, in addition to those two, well, actually before I move on from these two lights, uh, when I got the white balance with my gray card from the, with the camera, I held the gray card right up in here to get the, the light, the color of the light from these to bounce off the gray card and set my custom white balance in camera. And if you have any questions on how to do that, we've got another video on the channel about how to do that. I did have a secondary camera set up right here. Um, it ended up being a profile shot and it was really, really tight and ended up being not very flattering. So we didn't end up using that at all. So there was a, definitely a lesson learned there. If you're gonna go with a really, really tight shot, you probably need to have someone operating the camera. What I found over time was that our talent moved around a little bit. And so sometimes the framing just didn't work at all. In addition to that, it just wasn't very flattering light on her from that angle, so didn't end up working for us at all. So definitely a lesson learned on that side. Over here to uh, behind the actress, or the talent actually, uh, we had a clamp light from the from a hardware store with a single compact fluorescent bulb. It was something like a 15 watt, just a really pretty low power household bulb in there. And that was just to make the talent stand out from the background a little bit. Now my diagramming program, I don't have a bookcase. We actually had a bookcase for the background, uh, but that's what this represents. It was a very small room with hardwood floors, probably 13 feet by 11 feet or somewhere in that range. So really kind of a small space, um, but I think we got a decent look for that kind of space. Uh, continuing on, we had a window over on this side and we pulled the curtains on that window. We didn't really want to me bringing a lot of that light in. I wanted my key light and my fill light to be doing, and, and the hair light to be doing most of the lighting on the actress or the talent. And uh, I wanted to be really kind of controlling the light in this particular case. So we pulled the curtains on that. Now, I also had uh, a new light, which I haven't used before in my previous videos, but which we'll be talking about again in a future episode. And I picked up a Fresnel light. This is a, uh, typically these are made by Ari, and there are some other makers of them as well, but Ari is probably the most popular. And then there are a bunch of um, knockoffs that are made in China. I picked one up from juliastudio.com, which you can go check out. It costs about $100. Um, it's not the perfect Fresnel light, um, but for $100, it's certainly pretty good. And so what I did with that is I actually aimed that at the bookcase in the background, and I shot it through... Uh, what's called a kookaloris or a cookie. And a cookie is just, a, in this particular case, it was a piece of cardboard with a few slats or s slits cut into it. So it's supposed to look like sunlight shining in through the window at sunset time onto the bookcase. Now as a Fresnel light, this has a very warm color to it. 
and uh, I definitely wanted that effect. I wanted it again to look like sunlight, and so I did not put any gels on it. We wanted to go ahead and operate it with it just like that. So again, we'll talk more about that in a future episode. Now, just for reference, it's not uh, indicated on here because this is actually a photography diagramming application, but the microphone was actually positioned again. Um, literally, the stand was sticking up right next to the camera, just barely out of view. And uh, it was boomed up and over to the talent just right over here. So it was within 18 to 24 inches from her chin and uh, just barely out of the frame. So we were able to get a pretty decent sound. Now, as far as sound is concerned, a couple of things I learned. Number one, when you put a lot of lighting gear and other stuff into a small room, which tended, which, which was an echoey room, and again, in this case, we had wood floors, so it was very echoey. Putting all that extra lighting gear in the room actually really helped. So don't ever feel like you, you wanna keep the room as uncluttered as possible. It's okay, as long as everything, of course, is out of the frame and uh, does, have some impact at kind of taming some of those echoes. Now in the future, I would actually probably also have brought in a rug just to throw on the floor, and that probably would have tamed things even further. I know I'll get a question, that stand that I use for the microphone is simply the type of stand that a musician would use. You can buy these uh, stands on Amazon. This one is an on-stage brand, Boom Mic Stand. It costs about $25 if you do a search at Amazon for Boom Mic Stand, you'll definitely find it. Now, as far as framing is concerned, I think I made a mistake on both of these, both for the A-roll and the B-roll. B-roll, I won't even show you because it was so unflattering and uh, the talent didn't appreciate it at all. So definitely a lesson learned there. Uh, as far as the framing on the A-roll, I think I got, and again, this was part of the trick here was the talent moved around a little bit. So when I had originally framed it, she was a little closer to where I had intended for her to be using the rule of thirds. Um, but she ended up a little bit closer to the very center of the frame. And so if I were to do it over again, I'd probably frame a little tighter with her head closer to the top and farther to the left of the frame. So lesson learned there as well. And uh, next time we won't make that mistake again. Thanks again for checking out the show. Hope that was helpful for you. If you have questions or other ideas that we didn't look at here, go ahead and leave us a response down below in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that. And we'll talk to you again soon.